Hi, I'm uh, some guy on the internet with a big old sustainable edible garden. And today I'm gonna be out here planting my Three Sisters Guild using a technique called slash mulch, which allows me to plant out my garden without ever having tilled the soil or ever use plastic or poisons or sheep mulching or anything like that. We're just gonna plant right into an old uh, lawn basically. Also, here's a bud. Now, this is a pretty cool technique because a lot of the uh, no-till organic methods for planting are actually neither no-till nor organic. A lot of organic no-till uh, requires field prep at some point, either with tilling or with plastic, or with poisons, with herbicide to defoliate. And usually it's a mix of both. So in some cases, some uh, uh, commentators are noting that some of the organic no-till uses more tilling and more poisons than, uh, than conventional. So, you know, that, but this is a technique where we're really going into an old lawn and uh, we're never going to do anything to remove that lawn. We're just going to kind of use the lawn to smother the lawn. It's pretty cool. Now, this is a technique that I've done for, uh, this is the sixth year that I've done this kind of technique. I've done it on two different sites. It's the first time I'll be trying it on this particular site, but I think it's gonna work well. Uh, of all of those experiences, uh, you know, I documented three years in a row uh, using uh, pretty scientific, uh, pretty rigorous methods and had yields that were higher than uh, conventional or about standard for the corn for conventional yields. But I also harvested a whole bunch of other stuff out of the same area, giving me over yielding. And so it's a, it's a, a, a technique that I've come to really love, especially in a garden that uses these permaculture zones. Now remember, permaculture zones are our number one strategy for pest control, our number one strategy for weed control, our number one strategy for irrigation, and our number one strategy for fertilizing, and our number one strategy to reduce maintenance in the garden. So I've already started out here with a zone one garden, um, that uh, that uh, is right by the house with a lot of the things that uh, that uh, re will require daily harvest and daily care. And then further out here, I'll be using the slash mulch technique for corn, beans, and squash because it's a technique that makes the soil so that I probably will not have to do any irrigation. Those years when I was hitting those conventional yields, I, on principle, did no uh, no irrigation. Now, I should also mention, for uh, for uh, you know, the sake of being honest, that one of those years I did have uh, a very poor germination because, on principle, for science, I did not do any kind of irrigation. And in that uh, in that year, uh, I had. Uh, a couple of weeks after planting with no rain and so I had very low irrigate or very low germination but in the other years um, it worked great and if I had just you know blown aside the whole idea that I was tracking data for research um, I could have watered it and probably gotten decent germination as well so I'm gonna show you how I'm doing it this year I'm gonna show you some of my results from previous years as well before we jump right in, I want to show you my zone one garden. It's my first year on site here. This garden is not complete yet, but um, it shows uh, just this one little area where I'll be growing herbs and greens and some fresh vegetables for daily use. These are things that are going to require more daily um, care. They're often much more um, uh, less tolerant of pests and stuff like that. So it's right by the house where I can defend it easily and do any kind of weeding that's necessary. Now let's go look over my zone three. Alrighty then, here's uh, my zone three garden in construction. As you can see, I'm using just rough mulching with whatever I can get my hands on. It's the first year here, so I don't have access to much compost or anything like that. Uh, and I've got this bed planted out with the Solanaceae Guild from the book Beauty in Abundance, which 
I just can't re recommend highly enough. Check it out. Beauty and Abundance by Michael Ho. Now, uh, so this area has been designed so that there's going to be protection from grass. There's no grass in here. And along the edges, I've used a permaculture technique called fortress planting to turn this into a big guild. So the fortress planting will keep grasses. As you see, these, uh, you know, it's surrounded by grasses. I'm just putting it into lawn. Uh, by the end of the season, the fortress planting will repel these grasses and then protect this garden in perpetuity from that grass encroachment. Got a nitrogen fixer right here uh, around the uh, north side of it to help um, gumi berry to help fertilize it. And here's the area where I have prepped for slash mulch. You see, I let it grow out. You can see it was nice, luxurious grass growth. Kitten thinks so. Kitten is like, this grass was the best. She loved like romping around in this grass as that cat. Kitten! Yeah, that's right. So, um, so you know, step one is to let it grow out for as long as possible. And step two is to scalp it. So you mow it really close or scythe it really close. I'd rather use a scythe, but I don't have one here yet. And then rake the, uh, the, um, the, the stuff, the stubble into these piles which will smother the lawn underneath, and we're going to plant directly into those. Now this year, I'm gonna cheat a little bit. Um, so I'm not uh, tracking data this year. I've already done that. Um, and I really wanna make sure that I have a good successful garden with this in my, my first year here. So uh, there was an issue with the timing on the slashing. Uh, these cats, uh, cats all over me here. And uh, the issue was uh, just summer came on really quickly and I always try to plant uh, my corn as early as possible once soil gets over 50 degrees. Uh, right now it's consistently up to 55, nearly 60 degrees uh, in this area. And uh, so it's a perfect time to plant my corn, but I had not done the slash early enough. Usually I like to give a few weeks for that slash to start to break down, um, get nice and brown. Uh, the nitrogen soaks into the ground. It's starting to compost. It's really ready to plant into at this point. Right now, it's a little bit early. In my experiences, if I do it too early, I'll, uh, you can get slugs or, uh, or other things going on from the grass. I mean, corn is grass, and here we have rotting grass. So you have all of the things that love to eat dying grass flesh and murder grass all surrounding the grass that you're planting. And so you can get some rotting of the seeds. Once it's broken down enough, those early decomposers that break down young grass tissues have moved on and it's safer environment for the corn to be planted into. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to poke some holes into that mulch layer and I'm gonna use a little bit of uh, a mix of composted clay sod and vermicompost to plant the seeds into. Blur, 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 the heebity deebity jeebity boo. I had to make sure that uh, I was actually in the shot. So here's uh, my pile here. It's about standard three sisters uh, size. And we're gonna plant about a foot apart for each of these, uh, for each of the main corn areas. So I'm gonna spread it out just a little bit to make sure I've got good weed suppression through here. Got a couple blades of grass coming up. I'm gonna cheat a little and, and kill those right now um, so they don't come back to haunt me later. And this looks pretty good. It looks like it's dense enough. It's going to uh, definitely kill the grass. So I'm gonna poke, boom, a few holes into it. The, this uh, soil here is just uh, 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 super hard clay, and it's just like no digging it, which is one of the reasons why, um, why I've, I've basically got to use a no-till system here. I'm going to try to, uh, you know, scrape into the soil a little bit so I can get a little soil seed contact. Um, you know, yep, about like that. So I've got uh, my holes for planting into this little thing. It's, you know, it's basically like 
a little mini sheet mulch made with the grass that you're sheet mulching into. It's pretty groovy. So I'm going to take a scoop of my, uh, my mix here and throw some of that into each of these holes. Not a lot, just a little bit. And um, so that's, that's what I'm going to plant into. And I got uh, my seeds, got some corn here in uh, my ridiculous 1990s skateboarding uh, oversized Jinko vest, which makes a great garden vest, by the way. It has massive pockets, a bunch of massive pockets. Um, so, cool. And uh, so here is this beautiful um, corn that uh, everyone knows I love. That's a great uh, multi-purpose corn and ornamental. It's uh, 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 the Japanese variegated corn. Um, and uh, this one looks a little small. So I'm gonna see what else I got here. These seeds look a little bit bigger. Bigger seeds are probably gonna have better germination. You know, bigger seeds will produce bigger seedlings, uh, which means that, uh, and the bigger seedlings are more resistant to drying out and stuff like that. So let's see what I got here. Um, boom, boom. Boom, boom. I kind of overdid a little, little bit on some of these, and that's fine. Um, boom, got a bee right in my face. Um, so I'm going to kind of push them down a little bit and try to get some good soil seed contact here um, as best as I can with them. And uh, the, the seeds really need that soil seed contact to germinate. I probably put too many in here that might cause a problem later, but you know, it is what it is. So while we watch Mike work, I'm going to talk at you. Now, another big benefit of this kind of system is how little work it is relative to anything else. Like even sheep mulching for the setup would take way more work than this, not to mention tilling. Tilling on this soil, especially this clay or digging would have been nearly impossible. I have some videos of past season where I have prepped uh, the entire field area lily house in about an hour from uh, the, including the slash mulching and planting and that was the work for the whole season. <laughs> Imagine it would have taken you know four hours at least to do the same amount of work with um, with tilling. Two uh, seeds in each hole is the old tradition and if you get 50 percent germination you know on on one of those you're still going to end up with uh at least one of those seedlings working well later on you can come back and um, pick pick the the best seedling for each one so once i'm done with the corn i'm also going to plant in my seminal pumpkins today i like to use uh, machata squash for this kind of three sisters. Sometimes I'll also throw in a couple of zucchini for early in the system, uh, early in the season. I'll harvest those for a while. In this region, they usually get hit by vine borers and I'm not gonna, I'm too lazy to do anything to stop that. So those will die back and the machadas, which are really resistant, the wildish machadas, which are really resistant to vine borer and, uh, and molds and mildews, will um, will thrive and cover and fill in those spaces. And by the end of the summer, it's going to be, uh, uh, hopefully, a beautiful and productive little, little companion, little uh, interplanting. So um, yeah, then once the corn is ankle high, that's when I'm gonna come in and plant my bean seeds. And I use beans that are specifically uh, for this kind of, um, this kind of uh, guild as well. So I should say it's uh, technically to me not a guild, I would call it an interplanting scheme. So uh, yeah, if you wanna find out more about it, I go into quite a bit of depth on this particular interplanting uh, in the book, Beauty and Abundance, which again, I, I just can't recommend enough. Um, so check that out. 
and uh, you know, give this system a try. It's right about the time of year to do it, and you can do it in just any area where you've let the grass grow out. And it's a great way to convert an area into high productivity garden. Another great benefit of doing this and having it kind of next to the uh, to the regular garden is that it still will have some long grasses by the end of the season. So the grasses have a pretty natural life cycle. They get cut about twice a season, which is ideal for encouraging biodiversity. And uh, uh, that means that I also have great firefly habitat. Uh, fireflies need long grasses. Uh, and nothing eats more slugs than fireflies. So uh, this Three Sisters garden next to my garden is also my slug patrol. In the first season, I'm a little worried the corn might get hit by some slugs some. It's the first time I'll ever garden in this area. But over time, this should end up being a nice uh, slug resistant kind of system. And now at this point, I'm just kind of rambling on about stuff. So I guess that means we're done. Also, here's a but. 